letting go of preconceived notions or preconceived ideas and rolling with the flow and being present to the moment and adjusting to uh, the realities of the situation, adjusting to a schedule, adjusting to the discipline. That's a fantastic lesson. Hey, it's Paul and welcome to another episode. And in this episode, as well as the following probably three or four episodes, I'm gonna to talk to you about a very specific experience that I had during the month of March and a part of April. And that's the experience of going to an ashram slash yoga retreat for yoga teacher training and uh, studies in the yogic lifestyle. And what I want to focus on specifically is the entrepreneurial lessons that I learned from attending this yoga retreat ashram and getting my yoga teacher uh, certification to be able to be a, a yoga teacher. Uh, from the month, uh, well from March 6th to April the 5th, uh, this year, just last month, I went to the Shivananda Yoga Retreat Center in the Bahamas. Which, by the way, if you've got to go to a yoga retreat, the Bahamas is the place to go. Sand, sun, surf, uh, as well as the yogic lifestyle for 30 days. Um, I'm going to talk to you about two specific lessons that I picked up uh, today. Uh, from that experience in, in uh, the Bahamas. And then in the following days, I'll talk to you about a couple of more lessons that I learned. Uh, I'll try to produce at least uh, three or four, maybe even five videos if I really get inspired. But essentially what happened was about a month or so prior to uh, March the 5th, or March the 6th, I was just bopping around line, online. I wanted to find a yoga retreat. Um, I had decided just out of nowhere that I wanted to receive my yoga teacher certification. Um, and I wanted to improve my yoga practice. I've been practicing now for a little over 10 years and I felt like it was just time to, 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 to do something to improve my yoga practice. So I found this retreat uh, in the Bahamas. Uh, it looked really inspiring. And uh, the thing that appealed to me was that it was a, a program of immersion. So I know me, I know my personality. The best way for me to really achieve something uh, of this nature is to immerse myself. So I chose to book a flight and uh, made a reservation and I showed up to the Bahamas to this yoga retreat. Now, the first lesson that I'd like to share with you as an entrepreneur is, well, well, let me just say this, lots of great experiences during that month, tremendous experiences. I hope I can share some of those with you. And I then began after the fact to see how they apply in business and as an entrepreneur and as someone who's trying to create a product and goods and services for the world. And so I'm gonna share some of those lessons with you. The first lesson that I uh, would like to share is the lesson of self-discipline. Now, at the yoga retreat, Every morning at 5.30 a.m. there was a wake-up bell. This huge Liberty, looking, Liberty Bell looking uh, apparatus, they rang the bell at 5.30 a.m. which gave us warning or gave us time, notice that at 6 a.m. was morning satsang or the morning meeting in which we had a talk, we had about 30, 45 minutes of meditation, silent meditation, and just the preparation for the day. So 5.30 wake up, 6, 6 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. is the morning satsang and meditation, and then a break, and then 8 a.m. we went into two hours of morning yoga. So every morning we did yoga, we did all the asanas, the postures, we learned, we were taught, we were taught how to teach. Then we took a break, we had brunch. Uh, brunch was from 10 to about 11. We had a little break where we could do homework, uh, where we could uh, fellowship. And then at noon, from noon to four o'clock, or from actually from noon to 3.30, we had afternoon lectures. Now we, were, we had a little break in there also, but the act, afternoon lectures covered uh, physiology, anatomy, the science of yoga, philosophy, um, meditation, 
uh, yogic practice, the yogic lifestyle, vegetarianism, um, all of the things that wrapped around uh, living the yogic lifestyle. Then we had a break and we would go to four o'clock. Well, it was just a short break. It was like 15, 20 minutes, right? Then we'd go from four o'clock to six o'clock, another afternoon yoga practice. Same thing, practice, teaching, learning. We'd have a short break uh, where we would have dinner and then we would reconvene uh, at 8 p.m. And from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. was the evening satsang in which we did meditation again for 30 to 45 minutes, silent meditation. We would have talks. Sometimes there were musicians. Sometimes there were philosophers. Sometimes there were scientists. We'd have an evening program of some sort. We'd leave the satsang hall at about 10 p.m., get back to our room, bed down, you know, doze off around 10.30. And guess what happened at 5.30 a.m. the next morning? Wake up bell again. And this went on for 30 days. Wake up bell, program, <laughs> meditation, dinner, go to bed, wake up bell, go to bed, just on and on and on and on. And there was very little deviation from the schedule. Now they let us know in advance that this would be the schedule, so we had a little bit of mental preparation, um, but very little deviation. And the point is, for entrepreneurs, is that a successful lifestyle requires discipline. Discipline of schedule, discipline of thought, discipline to really put one foot in front of the other, even when you're tired, when you're physically beat, when you're mentally beat, when you're emotionally beat, and when, when things just seem to be going on and on and on, you know, the drudgery sometimes, right, of schedule. The point is, if we put one foot in front of the other and we continue to move forward, continue with our schedule, continue with the discipline of our plan, then we see progress. So, I, I actually didn't have that much challenge, that much of a challenge at all with the discipline of the schedule. Um, I found it refreshing. I found it very um, uh, invigorating that I could actually depend on someone else to put the schedule in front of me and I just had to follow the schedule. Um, but maybe you've heard that it takes 21 days or 30 days, somewhere in there, <coughs> pardon, it takes 21 days or 30 days to create a habit, to get rid of an old habit and create a new habit. So this is a really good training in that it created a habit. Uh, more habits, better habits for me actually. Uh, the other part of this is, is that every day we, uh, for our meals, we're vegetarian, total vegetarian. Uh, some of the meals were vegan, uh, most of them were vegetarian. You had the option, right? Um, now, I, I am currently not a vegetation, uh, vegetation, I am currently not a vegetarian. Sometimes I'm a vegetation, but currently I'm not a vegetarian. Uh, I have been in the past. The longest stretch that I've ever gone as a vegetarian was seven years. Um, I don't eat a lot of meat. I don't find, I find that it doesn't do much for my body. In fact, it usually makes me kind of drowsy and, and sluggish, so I tend to eat fairly well anyway. Um, Except for if you're one of my close friends, you know I love chips at a Mex Mexican food restaurant, right? But the vegetarian lifestyle re uh, gave us energy, you know, gave us physical energy uh, to carry on through the program. So the point there for entrepreneurs is really take care of your body. I don't know what that means for you. It might mean vegetarianism. It might mean being a vegan. It might mean, it might mean uh, reducing your intake of uh, meats and fishes and so forth. <coughs> I'm not a nutritionist. I don't plan. I don't pretend to be a nutritionist. I do know that when you serve your body and when you support your body with the right dietary program, with the, with the right nutritional program, it gives you more energy. It gives you more energy as an entrepreneur to go out there and, and do what you do in the world and do it in a way that's sharp and crisp and clean and clear and uh, uh, produces results. So that was another piece of the discipline. You know, I couldn't reach for the chips. I couldn't reach for a hamburger. I couldn't reach for uh, those things that, that sometimes I, I like to turn to, you know, as, as comfort food, frankly, right? Um, so the discipline of that was refreshing as, all, as well. So the first point there was the discipline of the routine in the, uh, in the yoga center. The second point that I, wanna, that I wanna share with you, notes that I made, uh, that applies to entrepreneurs is let go of expectations. Let go of preconceived notions. 
Now when I got online and I read the description, the curriculum, the expectations of this program, I went in with specific preconceived notions. I, I mean, I think it's natural. You, you just feel like, okay, this is gonna happen, that's gonna happen, I'm gonna have this amount of time, I can hang out at the beach this amount of time, I can hang out with friends this amount of time. There's a casino, the Atlantis Casino, Atlant Atlantis Casino, just in resort, you know, like, a quarter of a mile away, ah, maybe I could bop over there, right? Preconceived notions about what I was going to learn, about the schedule, about who I was learning from, etc. In business, I'm sure that you've experienced the same thing. You have preconceived notions about what's going to take place in your business, with your customers, um, in the marketplace, with your employees, etc. Letting go of preconceived notions or preconceived ideas and rolling with the flow and being present to the moment and adjusting to uh, the realities of the situation, adjusting to a schedule, adjusting to the discipline, that's a fantastic lesson. Uh, it's a fantastic lesson in really being present and being mobile and fluid uh, with your schedule. Very important as an entrepreneur because I will bet that at some point in your entrepreneurial life you've experienced some change in plans. You've experienced something that took place that you didn't really expect to happen. So letting go of preconceived notions, going with the flow, being happy and present in the moment with the flow and what's happening just sets you up completely for success, for success of what's happening, uh, for success, success of thought. <coughs> and those expectations, if you hold on to those preconceived expectations, it does nothing more than weigh you down, lock you down, doesn't allow you to move forward in whatever your endeavor is. So for now, those are my first two entrepreneurial lessons from my yoga retreat that I took in the month of March, in the beginning of April. Um, and the first one was discipline, the importance of discipline uh, in your entrepreneurial life. And the second was uh, letting go of preconceived ideas in your business and in your entrepreneurial life uh, so that you can set yourself up for success. I'm gonna follow up this video with uh, some more lessons that I've uh, that I took away from the yoga retreat. So stay tuned, you'll see here in this uh, format that I'll post a link and you can watch the video. I would love to know your feedback. I'd love for you to share this video, like this video, comment on this video, tell me if you agree with this or what you think the difference is. And I mean, let's just, I would love to hear what you have to say about this. Um, if you would like, as always, to discuss with me any topic that I ever share on these videos, feel free to go to the link, paulmontalongo.com slash strategy, and we'll set an appointment and we'll discuss those. I will discuss those with you personally and we'll see what it takes to help you move forward. For now, thank you for watching. Share the videos, like the videos, and I'll see you next time.